Hi and welcome to the 2018 Levisart Order Level Paper 2. So we're starting here on question 1. As usual, I'd suggest you just pause the video at the different sections and just have a go. Uh, if you can't make head nor tail or whatever, you can check your answer. You have the workings on the next page. If you want the set of notes that I'm working off with the question uh, screen printed or screen grabbed and the answer built in, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. That email address is in the description below. So question one here is a probability question. Part A, you know, there's three different parts here with different marks. You can see them kind of uh, highlighted throughout. But an experiment consists of throwing two fair standard six-sided dice and recording the sum of the two numbers thrown. Some of the totals are shown in the table below. So you have the first throw of the dice or one throw of the dice could be one and one snake eyes. You, when you add them together, you get two. You could get one and two, where the sum is three. You could get one and a three, where the sum of them will be four. So every single possibility is accounted for, or will be accounted for, in this uh, sample space here. So if we fill in the table, okay, um, it's pretty handy. If you think about here, if the six and one was thrown, so a six and one dice, a one and the other, we get a seven here. Okay, now I might just go to the answer, see if we try to mess with it, but... Next one then would be five and two would give you seven. Four and three would also give you seven. We have then four and four would give you eight. And whether then five and five would give you the 10 here. And lastly, six and six would give you 12. Now I marked the uh, leaving start paper two and that was very well answered. It's a very nice question. Very, you know, um, as long as you can you read carefully what's going on, you should be able to make a good stab at it. Now, part two here says, find the probability of getting a total of seven or 11. Now, probability is a tricky subject. Sometimes it's counterintuitive. Some students, myself included, find it incredibly difficult. I often answer the wrong thing, or it's taken me a long time to get um, even, I won't say good at it, but, you know, able to get by most of the questions. But even then, I find myself getting my proverbial handed to me um, on the odd occasion. So... Don't beat yourself up if you're struggling with these questions. It is tricky. The only way around it, sorry to tell you, is practice. But that's you know one thing that's easier said than done. One thing to help you out is to at least know what the terminology means. And the word or means add. Okay. The word and in probability means multiply. So whatever we're going to do here, we're going to add our probabilities. Now, if you added two probabilities, you would have got the low partial, if I recall. Okay. Well, we're looking here to see what's the probability of getting a 7 or the probability of getting an 11. Okay, so we have the 7 first. Well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sevens in this sample space of 36 numbers. That's where you get the 6 out of 36. So the probability is given by the number of actual outcomes divided by the number of possible outcomes. So 7 occurs 6 times out of a possible 36. Now, the 11 here, how many 11s? are in this sample space. If you look down here, there's two of them out of a possible 36. So if R means add, I have to add these two probabilities. They're the same denominator, so I can just add the numerators. Six and two is eight. Now that's these uh, eight over 36. You should always, if you can, simplify your answer. There's no need to go decimal here. Um, they don't tell you it has to be in, fra in fraction form, but you know, decimal, uh, especially if this went on, if it wasn't a, a, it was like an irrational decimal, so I would say always just leave it in the fraction form. It's kind of what the examiner is looking for. So if you put it in, in decimal, you might make it a little harder for them to see that you have the answer. I would say say with all questions, especially this one, maybe it's time to, you know, maybe put a box around your answer. Okay, or in some way indicate that this is your answer. So it can help um, the examiner to make, not miss it. Okay. Now, part three here says, find the probability of getting a total, which is a prime number. So you have to know, first of all, what's a prime number, okay? So if I've written in here, prime number is a number that can only be divided by itself or one, okay? And the prime numbers in this list, okay, are two. Two can only be divided by two or one. Three, now I should, actually I should say here without a remainder. Um, three can only be divided by three and one. Now four isn't prime because it can be divided by four or two or one. Five is prime. Six isn't. 7 is, 8 isn't, 9 isn't, 10 isn't, 11 is, 12 isn't. So I've written down all the primes here. The question is how many 
of these 36 numbers are primes. If I count it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so there are 15 prime numbers. Okay, that's the number of possible outcomes. Out of the total number of outcomes, 36. Job done. Now, if you simplify that, you'll end up with 5 over 12. And the calculator will do that for you. Just put 15 over 36 in the calculator, press equal, and it will simplify it for you. But if we wanted to learn how to do it, or we should, and we should know how to do it, you'd be looking for a number that will divide evenly the top and bottom. Now, in this case, it's 3. 3 to 15 goes 5 times. 3 to 36 goes 12 times. You can't simplify any further because there's no number that will divide evenly into top and bottom. Okay. Now, here's part B. Now, part B is, you can see here, my hint, my word hint, whatever. This is incredibly tricky. This got me when I first looked at the paper and got me for a long time, even when I was uh, in the process of, of marking and stuff. And the uh, you know, <laughs> trying to mark it becomes very, very tricky. Now, it's a 10D scale, so you're looking, hopefully, to, even with a tricky question, to get at least the two marks, okay? And the hint here, well, one of the hints would be, a car can only be counted once, okay? So that's a very specific scenario in probability where something is not mutually exclusive, okay? There, there is overlap, is what we'd often say. Anyway, we'll read through it. A car distributor sells Ford cars and Renault cars. It has 30 cars for sale on a particular day, okay? Now you could do it like this, okay, it's 30, and then go right, 18 of them are Fords, so 18, let's say F for Fords, okay, and what, 12 Reynolds, 12 R for Reynolds. Excuse this bad writing, this thing doesn't, isn't easy to use, uh, F for Ford. Now of those Fords, okay, seven are red, so seven red Ford, okay, and then you have, the, don't, they don't tell you this, but obviously that means there's 11 not red Fords, so just within normal Fords. Of the Reynolds, okay, they say four are red. So four red Reynolds, or R. And the last thing then will be eight non-red, so eight Reynolds. Now, since saying to you, what is the probability that a car chosen is a Ford, okay, or a car which is not red? Now, this not red messes with people's heads. This was very poorly answered uh, for good reason, okay? If we think about, well, how many Fords are there? Right, you have that. So that's going to be added to something else, okay? Now, or a car which is not red. Now, if you think about it, this 11 and this 8 are not red, okay? So you're basically going 18 plus 11 plus 8, okay, is... Or is all the Fords and all the not red cars. Now, if you add that up, that would give you a 18 and 11 is 29. And 8 would be, oh gosh, I should know, 37. Let's we'll say 27 over 30. Now, your answer can't be that. Probability can't be greater than 1. So there's something wrong here. We, if we, this is, the, again, the situation of overlap. You've counted these 18 Fords and the 11 not red Fords. So there's overlap there. You need to take away those 11 that are overlapping. Or if you're thinking about just not counting them in the first place, okay? 27 take away 11 is 26 out of 30, and that's your answer. Now, if you simplify that, it's 15 over, it's over no, 13 over 15, I think it is. Um, now, that's my working through it of it now. I've literally just made the, the set of notes here, so hopefully I'm right. Uh, yeah, so I'm kind of hoping that this makes sense to you. I'll go through it again, though, because it is, is very tricky. If you're struggling with these probability questions, like, don't beat yourself up. Like, everybody else is too. And a vast majority are not succeeding at it. So your question is asking for the probability of a Ford or a not red car. Okay. So the probability of a Ford, if you said it was 18 over 30, you're giving that directly in the question. The probability of not red is the 11 over 30 for the Fords. The 8 over 30 for the Reynolds gives you a 19 over 30. Now, I've done it here. I've just added those two things together. At the same time, then went, well, I need to account for the the, the, red, the not red Fords. There was 11 of them. So I've taken that away. I ended up with 26 over 30. Simplify that down. Divide top and bottom by 2. I ended up with 13 over 15. Okay. 
Now, hopefully this will like, it'll make sense. There's event A is the forwards, event B is the not reds. There is a commonality between those two events. Okay. And that's the 11 over 30, which we take, we, and we take that away so we're not double counting. Now, let's stay on the question one. Okay. So, again, I hope it makes sense. It is always worth having a go at uh, your probability questions because, again, the more practice, the better. Probability is featuring much more heavily in the last few years in questions and all the way to the paper. And I don't think that's ever going to change. It's a really important aspect of our modern life, uh, data management, et cetera, et cetera. We are living in the information age, so expect more of these. The only way to get good at them is practice. The books have lots of questions, and I would suggest you practice the hell out of them as well until you're getting, like, you know, better success. And hopefully on the day you'll have good success and take away good marks from this question. Anyway, that's question one. Thank you very much, and see you on question two.